بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Respected brothers, sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh Apologies that I am coming to you today from my car I just couldn't find time and this video was very important for it to be released so I just parked up on the side at the moment uh, and I thought let me just quickly record this video Alhamdulillah, um, we shall be offering through Dar Lifta a very, very exciting course. I'm very excited myself for this course. Alhamdulillah, previously uh, we've offered various courses and Alhamdulillah, there's been great feedback from people. Lots of people have attended these courses. There was a course on Taqlid uh, over a weekend intensive. And then I also taught the, uh, the creed or the... Uh, discussions in the beliefs of Ahlul Sunnah, which was based on the book Al Muhannad Al Mufannad, which is about 25 hours long course, and then also a course on marriage, um, and also a course on parenting, uh, Ramadan. So there's five, six courses online. These are all online courses that in the last since the COVID time we've been offering through Darul Ifta, and uh, most of them are available on the Darul Ifta website, daruliftah.com, and the links will be provided, inshallah. Uh, but daruliftah.com uh, in the courses section but in the next few weeks in the summer you, June, uh, July and August so two months over a period of eight weeks so it's only like uh, three hours every week so every Saturday from UK time 10am to 1pm for eight weeks so it's a long course and uh, inshallah you get time to sort of review through the week and digest. But it's a very detailed course. I'm very excited myself because this course, I think it's, it's so important, so relevant, so important. Title is Unity Through Diversity, Understanding and Navigating Differences. Whatever the title, but the point about this course is that this course, in this course... Uh, what we want to discuss and what I really want to discuss in a lot of depth and detail. The reasons, the causes behind the differences we see in the Ummah. Like classically, uh, amongst the four schools of thought, even in Aqidah issues, uh, amongst the Tabi'un, the great Imams, the Fuqaha, the jurists. And then later on, why are there so many, apparently, why are there so many differences? When we have one Quran, one Sunnah, one Hadith, uh, you know, we all have the same Hadiths and we have the same Quran. <clears throat> why do we have so many differences? You know, sometimes people get confused. People ask about these things that why are, is there so much division and disunity? Why has there always been differences and why are there currently? If you understand in the past how differences took place, then we can understand in the current times why differences are taking place. But what I want to do is explore this issue in a lot of depth and detail so that you feel at ease we feel at ease we understand uh what's going on basically and we understand the nature the concept behind all these differences so the course will be based on major classical books so like in this course i want to kind of give you a summary of various sciences like usul al-fiqh good points and summarized points of usul al-fiqh usul al-hadith uh, and some other like books. So, for example, um, the classical books, it will be based on these classical usul al fiqh and usul al hadith books, and two really important modern day books, both uh, written by scholars. Well, one is still alive, Sheikh Muhammad Awama, Hafidahullah, who lives in Turkey right now and is originally from Halab, Syria, the student of Sheikh Abdul Fattah Abu Ghadda, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Uh, Sheikh Muhammad Awama, he wrote an amazing book. Well, he's written two amazing books and he's got some other books as well. But the, the book that we're basing this course on is Athar al Hadith al Sharif fi Ikhtilaf al A'immat al Fuqaha. The effect, the influence of the noble hadith on the differences between the great jurists of the past. Athar al Hadith al Sharif fi Ikhtilaf al A'immat al Fuqaha. And then he has another book called Adab al Ikhtilaf. Like, what are the etiquettes of differences? And the other book is Sheikh Al Hadith Mawlana Zakaria Kandahli, he wrote a book called Ikhtilaf Al Aimma. Both have been translated into English, and it's good if the students who attend this course um, sort of, uh, if they can obtain these books and they can, inshallah, you know, read through them. 
But the Athar al-Hadith Sharif in English, which uh, I personally edited, uh, and it's published by Torah Publishing, it's very complicated. Even reading yourself, you can't really understand. But I want to summarize the points in that book. So basically, the course will be like, in the beginning, we'll start off with um, the, the concept of differences of opinion why you know is is this is this something bad what what is the meaning of differences is it bad all is bad and i've ex i'm going to explain in a couple of hours the importance of it the requirement why we need differences and in islam why all these differences different opinions different positions different viewpoints took place and occurred and why people chose different opinions why this is something that allah wanted to occur uh, so there's a good discussion on that. Then we go into, I think, 10 or 12 major reasons why there seems to be apparent um, contradictions in prophetic hadiths. Apparent, I say apparent, not in front of her, not in reality, but it just occurs to us that there's actually one hadith saying this, another hadith saying they're like apparently opposing one another, contradicting one another. So those 10, I think 10 or 12, because I'm preparing the course notes. It's taking a lot of time likes to put everything together in writing in English. So 10, 12 um, causes, uh, sorry, and with examples. Each one has got, got each uh, reason has a lot of examples, or two, three examples. Like, for example, um, there's a hadith where the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked, amali afdal? What is the most virtuous of deeds? He said, As-salatu fi awali waqtiha. Salah in its time. And then somebody else asked him the same question. And he said, Birr al Being good to your parents. Obedience to parents. Uh, and then somebody else asked the same question. And he gave a d different response. So, same question, different responses. They see, this seems that there's a contradiction in the sunnah. But there isn't in reality. So, things like that. Then we'll look at the Sahaba, why they disagreed. Some examples of the Sahaba disagreeing on certain matters of fiqh uh, based on those hadiths. Then we go on to Usul al fiqh. So, there'll be a, like a whole session on Usul al fiqh. Seven, eight sort of Usul al fiqh points and principles. Usul al fiqh is like the methodology, the approach, the juristic approach, uh, and the juristic methodology between the classical imams so different imams employed and used different methodology different methodologies methodologies and different like approaches in how to understand the quran and sunnah right and and various topics how to sort of analyze the various issues in the quran and sunnah so based on those different methodologies they disagreed and we'll look at that in a lot of detail, like khas, am, and how if there's a verse of the Qur'an and that there's a contradiction between that um, and a hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is khabar wahid, then what do we do, etc, etc. So that's one session. Then we go on to the main session, which is atharul hadith al-sharif. Like how does the hadith, sunnah, literature impact and influence these differences? And in there we've got eight major ways in which understanding the hadith. Hadith doesn't make the differences, but like how the great imams, they when they looked at hadith, there's about eight major causes, with each one with lots of examples. So like, for example, there's a difference of opinion about the definition of hadith. We'll look at what is sahih, what is hasan, what is, da, what is da'if. So now we'll apply... And we'll summarize some usul al fiqh issues, uh, sorry, usul al hadith issues as well. Hadith verification principles, we're going to look at that as well. And then how differences occur based on how a hadith is read or recited. Uh, if it's bamma and fatha, it's completely opposite meaning. All these things occurred, and that's why I'll sh you know, we'll look at examples why the Hanafi said this, the Maliki said this, the Hanbali said this, and the Shafi'i said this, etc. etc. Uh, so there's like lots of causes. Um, and then there's some doubts and some questions that have been mentioned by Sheikh Muhammad Awama in his book. We'll look at them. Uh, you know, certain misconceptions and misunderstandings that people have. And then right at the end, inshallah, I want to do like three case studies to show that, look, it's not as easy as like, you know, or it's not as straightforward as like you, re, re, you look at a verse of the Quran and you look at a hadith and that's it. Oh, it's clear. It's not like that. So three case studies, basically. 
cetera. So it's a, like we're going to look at three case, three long detailed issues, case studies where we're going, going to inshallah thoroughly analyze. This is a Shafi'i opinion, Hanafi opinion, Maliki opinion, Hanbali opinion, such and such Imam opinion. This is what he said. This is what he said. These are the evidences of such and such jurists, such and such Imam. Uh, and then the response from this side and then analyzing from this side, like a whole how case study, how it works, basically. So we appreciate and understand why this happened. And then right at the end, inshallah, we're going to have a session on adab al-ikhtilaf, which is really needed. The etiquette of etiquettes of disagreement. How much, you know, can you, when can you disagree? Sorry, um, uh, the etiquettes, the adab, adab of disagreement. How should you disagree, even if you have to disagree? You know, what are, what are the etiquettes? What are the adab of disagreeing, etc., etc., inshallah. So if you guys, uh, you know, inshallah, have time, uh, and hope you can take time out. Uh, July, August is the summer. There'll be a small fee as well. Like you know, with all the courses, we, we put a small fee. Uh, I think that's important because, you know, it gives uh, motivation for people. Um, uh, it, it, it basically, it makes people less lazy, lazy. If you paid for something, then inshallah, you know, you, it makes you, it makes you study well. Uh, and when you get something for free, then people sometimes can become negligent uh, and neglectful. Uh, and also because there's costs involved in running and times of not just myself, but other people around who are all managing. It takes a lot of time to sort of put something like this together. Detailed course notes will be provided. Good 40, 50 pages I'm at, at this moment. The whole month, my whole June will be uh, spent in trying to write and gather all of this. Uh, inshallah. And it will be like, as I said. Uh, eight week session Saturday UK time Saturday 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. but the recordings will be available so if you are not in the UK different time zones then inshallah in your own time you can view the content but of course you won't able to ask live questions if you're not there in the live session uh, inshallah ta'ala so yeah jazakumullah khair may Allah bless all of us uh, hopefully uh, once it is advertised the course then you will register and um, you know share this message out, uh, out to your friends and those who you think might be interested assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh